Alright everybody, so welcome back. Last session, you all began your evening at a meeting of prominent leaders in the area surrounding Elturel. Leaders from the Order of the Gauntlet, as well as leadership from Baldur's Gate, and of course the city of Elturel itself. You all thought that you'd been gathered to address an issue with the Cult of the Dragon. But what turned out to be going on proved far more sinister than that. You all traveled with Rhea Mantelmorn, a prominent Hell Rider, and your guide for this particular expedition through the Elturel countryside. Seeing the beautiful, beautiful hills and farms and getting a chance to meet some of the people of the city before the darkness began to fall over you all as the light of the companion, the second sun that always hung up over Elturel, the light of that began to fade until finally you made your way into the woods, into the Elter Guard woods, and the light of the companion no longer reached you at all. You all quickly caught on to the fact that something wasn't quite right. The dragon cultists seemed to have some unwelcome company, and as you snuck up towards their ritual site, that was very much confirmed, as the first thing that you witnessed was an insane cultist in heavy armor drowning one of the dragon cultists over and over and over again, seemingly dunking the lifeless body into the stream and howling praises to one of her dark gods. You stormed into the ritual site, destroying many of these cultists, and along the way, learning their origin. The Cult of the Dead Three, worshippers of the trio of gods Bane, Ball, and Murder, and Merkel, the gods of tyranny, undeath, and murder, respectively. They were brutally torturing one of the dragon cultists, but it didn't seem like they were doing it for information, more out of some sort of sick enjoyment. And when they saw you all, they quickly executed their captive, and then slunk into the shadows to ambush you all. You were able to fight these beings off, but after you after you took these dead three cultists out, you were able to kind of go through their things and realize that they had some strange plans, and those plans involved the city of Alterel in some way. Dread beginning to wash over you all. You rushed back towards the city, pushing your, your horses as hard as they could go, and as you rode up, mile or two outside of the city, you could see the companion again, you could see the city itself in the distance, and everything seemed fine, right up until the moment the companion went jet black. Normally, a second sun hanging over Elturel turned into almost a black hole, shooting out purplish bolts of lightning out of the city, while simultaneously, chains of infernal iron erupted out of the earth, shooting high overhead in the city before crashing down and dragging the entirety of Elturel down into Avernus. Everybody in the city, including the areas just outside of the city, now gone to an unknown fate. The remnants of one of the individuals you met, a thread of rainbow fabric drifting down out of the disaster. That is where we pick up. When he's going to be at, like, the edge of where El Terrell was once. So it doesn't take you long to get to the edge of the crater where El Terrell once stood. It seems that a perfect circle had been carved into the earth. Buildings sheared in half in the outskirts of El Terrell. A farm still burning from where half of it had been pulled down while the other half was left here. People are still crying out. There is immense damage to the out to the outlying surrounding area of El Terrell. I'm, uh... First thing first, I th think we need to see if we can organize the current survivors to see who is here, who is not. 
Furious, as you say that, Rhea comes riding up next to you, and she has a blank face. She looks over. She's still up on her horse. Her expression is dark, cold. She hasn't said anything since this happened. Uh, I think, uh, Ferris would like to ask her of, um, any information on any outside, uh, settlements in the area. She would kind of shake her head and say, Sure, there's villages to the east and to the west of us along the river. Looney's just going to drop to her knees, just not talking. Just in literally a state of shock, weeping. I, I think Ferris would continue uh, to speak with uh, uh, Rhea. Uh, starting to formulate a plan to do what we can for those people, at least to get them somewhere safe before we figure out the next step. She does little more than nod her head whenever you make a suggestion, Harris. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, would Tiberius know if there were any like outposts for like any other of the Hell Riders um, or any other organization like that that could uh, to potentially provide aid and to try to get resources to start? figuring out what the hell just happened here. Well, while Tiberius, you would probably know of the existence of these outposts, and um, mainly barracks and things like that outside of the city. Um, Rhea and Bucky would know explicitly where those places are. Um, Rhea, Bucky, do you know if there are any potential outposts that were able to survive this devastation to, po to possibly, well, convene that to gather what forces we have. Rhea says nothing. Just continues staring into the crater. <laughs> oh, you know um, what? Go I ahead. assume there should be some. Where would those actually be? Uh, well... Bucky, as you kind of remember where this is, if you look off to your left, you would see where one of them should have been. Um, it appears that about two-thirds of it is gone. The curvature of the crater cutting off most of it. What's left is a smoking part of the building. Okay. Where would I... the nearest one from there be, if any? About a mile. About a mile west of you all. I have a question. Um, my homunculus server. Now you said that we're not doing the uh, the item thing. Like it says, a gem or crystal worth at least 100 gold pieces. Uh, anything that has a gold piece value, you need to at least have the gold and the means to buy the item. Gotcha. Okay. Never mind. Currently, Anna is burning. <laughs> it's like she's literally on fire from the inside out. Her skin has gone all kind of cracked and dark, and you can see the light coming through the cracks of her skin. And she's pissed! So I guess Bucky, just stunned in disbelief, would just try to get through um, pointing out the nearest one would be to the west. Yes. About a mile away. Right. Do, um, and, uh, go ahead, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I was just going to ask, like, do any of us have, can we do, like, an arcana check for someone who might know what just happened? I believe a com combination history and religion. So we need two separate checks. We need one from history and one from religion. Um, they can be from the same person or from two different people. Either one's either way is fine. I am proficient in religion. Proficient history. You know, the curse continues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the shock of the situation, the the violence of it all has shaken both of your minds just a bit. Um, you know there is precedent to something like this happening before, 
but um, the exact stories, the exact situations elude you. Stories about the companion going out and a, um, a more dragon. like stories of entire populations being dragged down into one of the hells. Survivors, we should get the survivors somewhere safe. <laughs> Bucky, as you say read. that, a pair you hear heavy, you hear heavy horses' footfalls. A pair of riders approaching from the west. They um, ride up to you, and Bucky, it is a pair of Hell Riders from your division. Marcus and Jacob have arrived Marcus here. Marcus and Jacob. Marcus and Jacob. They I are guess. younger Hell Riders. They are relatively new. They've been. If you are nearing, if you are nearing your official Hell Rider title, then they are probably a good year or two behind you. Um, yeah. they ride up and they are in shock as well and they turn towards you and they say were they all in there? and then that would be Marcus and then Jacob would say Fabius called an all hell riders called an all hell riders assembly not two hours ago they all they look towards what the crater happened. go ahead I don't know what happened. We were out on a an assignment. We were on our way back. Um, we got to do something. We need to get whoever's left, figure out what happened. At that point, you all would see Rhea kind of just lift her head up away from the crater for the first time. And she would rein her horse around and turn it back towards you. And now, for... Hell Riders, possibly the last four Hell Riders in this plane of existence. Rhea looks around towards all of you and says, "She, she asks them to repeat what they just told you, and they tell they tell her that Davius Krieg, the High Overseer of Elturel, had mm -hmm. literally hours ago just called every Hell Rider into the city for an assembly for a meeting. Um, she said if it was two hours ago and they called him in." All barracks, all leadership has likely made it into the city. And for you are all that is currently left. That seems deliberate. So, did, did he say why? Did he say what was happening? They said no. They said that it was urgent, but we needed to go out and get the, get the horses in. It is why those two were left. They said that they were on their way. They were about an hour and a half behind everybody else. Two well, lucky ones, then. Yeah, we can't stay here. We need to do something. Um, Rhea, go ahead. Yeah. Well, seeing which folks on the outskirts are able to survive is, of course, the first thing. Though after that, we need to. Th we also need to see if we can determine precisely what happened here, and what calls this uh we do have one possible clue due to the fact that we had gathered up that uh piece of paper stating that the cult that was taking out the cult of the dragon had some sort of artifact that they had gathered up in Baldur's gate i think what we should do is to get a jump on that i think we should have uh, Rhea, marcus and jacob scout the area, find any survivors, and take them to Baldur's Gate, uh, while we immediately head there. And hopefully um, we're not too far behind. I'm sorry if I missed this. How big exactly does this crater look like? It is the... It is an entire city. The entirety of Elturel, the mountain, the uh, outcropping of stone it sat on, and the entire outskirts. It's like somebody drew a circle and said, that's Elturel, and that is what's gone. Okay. So, like, if it, if it was to, if it was to be like L.A., it would be like the downtown area and the surrounding and like the immediate the immediate suburbs of right. it, you know. And how far was Baldur's Gate from here? Uh, Baldur's Gate is about two days travel west of here, along the Chiantha River. Okay. 
and I think maybe Rhea, Marcus, and Jacob should ride the long way around the crater, gather anyone they can, and get them to this outpost to the west. We'll take the shorter route, getting um, anybody we Bucky, run into. These two guys yes. would have come from that outpost. Everyone there is right. was was called into the city. I'm just thinking to get somebody, get everyone somewhere safe. I think they need to get as far away anything, from there as possible. Yeah, anything I, close I, to the city is no longer safe. You're right. I think if we go to Baldur's Gate right away, we won't be too far behind the cultists with whatever item they need to take oh. there. And then the remaining Hellriders that are staying, they gives them time to circle around, grab everybody, bring them to Baldur's Gate where we can meet up with them, uh, hopefully having figured out whatever it is we need to figure out there, and then we can question them if they've seen anything that we didn't. I guess my thought process is that's a two-day trip, and I'm not sure that we really are supplied to head straight for a two-day travel. The outpost would have some supplies we could pick up and, I guess, just mm. leave from there. So, as you all are having this discussion, Rhea has, is slowly kind of pulling herself together, and she has overheard this plan, and she kind of points your all's attention to the west, and you all can see there is already a caravan of people fleeing as fast as they can to the west. Um, she looks towards you, Ferris, and says, is Baldur's Gate prepared for a refugee crisis? Well, that would depend on how many refugees there are. So there are thousands that live in the outlying cities, and for, if, they, if you count here, several thousand people. Uh, would Ferris know the answer to that? I mean, uh, I, yeah, I suppose he would, The short but... answer would be that um, the Flaming Fist is likely to slam the door in their faces as they get there. Oof. Okay. Uh, Ferris, knowing that, uh, would just solemnly look down and slowly shake his head, no. Then she nods and says, then there are two courses that need to be taken here. First, and she says that she... Marcus and Jacob will do whatever you all decide not to, but first, yes, somebody needs to take charge here and gather up whatever refugees you can, whatever survivors you can, and make a concerted and defended push towards the east, towards the west, towards Baldur's Gate. Um, in the meantime, somebody else, one of the other, whoever, the other job would be to ride out ahead, get to Baldur's Gate ahead of as many of these refugees as you can, and see if we can work out an agreement to let these people into the city. Well, Ferris having associates with the, uh, was it the Flaming Fist? Mm-hmm. Um, having associates with them and having been their uh, delegate to the meeting to begin with, uh, volunteers himself to be the one to speak with them. You can't go alone. It's too dangerous. We don't know what's out there. Speaking of dangerous and what's out there, and in Tiberius, you would both know that there has been a massive surge in undead activity in the fields of the dead the past week. So yes, it is extraordinarily dangerous at the moment. Mm. We will share that think... information with the party. Okay. And then, and then uh, Anna's gonna just look at Winnie and just tell her, get up. We're not going to help anybody with you on your knees. He still is in a state of shock, but listens to Anna um, picking up Grace's scarf and just putting it around her neck. Head down, walks back to the rest of the party. Well, perhaps not for talking. now, perhaps for now, maybe, um, Bucky was right, maybe we should have everybody meet up at the outpost just to calm everybody down and get a real game plan going and take stock of supplies and I think that could be a job for the three NPCs. Well I agree. My point is, would we even have like 
food and things prepared. You would have everything that you would have in your packs, so yeah. 10 catch okay. rations. rations. Yeah, you'd have rations, you'd have your explorer's pack, all that good stuff. Everything that you okay. would have had. Okay, I was thinking that we might have came a little lightly prepared for being out for several days. If it's in your, if it's in your player gear, you had it. Okay, then. We, we should go to Baldur's Gate, figure out what the hell's going on, and then I am going to get my kids. I can agree with that plan. Winnie's head like, perks up when she hears Anna say her kids, and she looks at Tiberius and Anna and just gets on her horse and still not talking. Is just ready to go. Okay, we'll have Rhea, Marcus, and Jacob gather who they can and make their way slowly. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and try to work something out. Right, everybody. Is there anything else you'd like to do in the outskirts of Boulder and the outskirts of El Toro before you begin your journey westward? Do like the temples and stuff like have like their own logos or sigils or symbols or anything? Like would Sune have like a, a symbol? Uh, yes, uh, the temple of Sune would have had a symbol, although that would have been in the city proper. Uh, that's fine. Uh, Anna's going to burn it into the into the roadway right where she's freaking standing. Okay. Nice. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. So it is nightfall. It is full night right now. Um. Depending on your pace, depending on your pace, um, you do have at least two days of travel ahead of you. The outpost is only about a mile away. You'll reach it in less than an hour. Um, but if you do force yourselves to travel through the night, there will be a level of exhaustion. So it is up to you. I will go ahead and put you all right here. as you travel out of the city. Oh, I think for the sake of the horses, we probably would have to stop. Yeah, and if you said that the fields of dead have had an influx of um, undying exhaustion, this is not going to be helpful for anybody. No, we can't help We're no good if we die on the way. Yes. Do we... I'm wondering if we push through the night and sleep later on. But no, there's no point in trying to make some progress just to put ourselves at risk. Let's just go to sleep at night. The question I have is uh, how many refugees have already bypassed us? How many survivors have already started heading that way that... I don't think we're going to be very useful if we have levels of exhaustion on us. Yeah, I think we should make it to the outpost, rest there, and then continue. Okay. I agree. We My don't only worry have is... time to wait at the outpost. We have to go and start heading to Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, y'all. <laughs> we can't Remember... ride for two days straight, though. It's... But we no, have to we start sleep. now. We start, and then we sleep on the road, and then we keep going. I mean, we can. We have to go. It is. Yeah, we have to go. We just can't leave ourselves exhausted. Winnie's going to start just slow walking her horse. Yeah, I'm she's, with you. She's, yeah, heading west because she's just one track mind. She needs to figure out what happened, where um, Sestra and Colton went, where Jaren is. Like, she made a promise and she's not going to break that promise. Paris looks into the uh, now pit where Elta Elta was, sighs and follows. Okay, so you all can cover the distance as you all 
begin a slow trot out of the city, which turns into a full gallop not far away. Um, you immediately begin to pass quite a bit of evidence that there has been a lot of people indeed that are out ahead of you. Um, so those of you that are used to the trails and used to the roads see the evidence of people hauling ass down this road. Um, but you can reach the outpost by nightfall if you all press yourselves and press your forces to their limit. I'm sorry, not by nightfall. By, we'll probably call it midnight. You can get, make it to the, um, make it to the outpost. And is that the outpost, like the west outpost that, um, what were their names? Marcus and Jacob came from? Correct. So they've already told you that it is abandoned. There's nobody there, but there is a roof, walls, and supplies there. Winnie would be heading towards Baldur's Gate. Okay. Yep. Like she, like she doesn't know where the rest of the party is going, but she heard get to Baldur's Gate. They have ant, like, there's something there. That's where she's headed. Okay. Is the is that outpost the halfway point between Baldur's no, Gate? No, the outpost is only about a couple hours away. Ugh. But considering it's already night, that night that at least gets us a head start towards that. I way. think the outpost is where we need to. Yeah, I think the outpost. I, I think we need to. Plus, these because people if we die, then it's you know, then there's nobody that can help. So, Winnie, it sounds like you are just gonna ride on. If she hears everyone yelling at her to stop, then she'll uh -huh. very not happily turn around. Still not really talking to anybody because she's processing. So after a couple, after a little less than two hours of writing, you all do come across, come upon that outpost. Um, sorry, time and distance is weird, but after a solid bolt, you all do arrive at that outpost. Um, as reported, there is nobody there. There is supplies. Um, you can, from here, you can likely get to about the halfway point um, if you all were to leave first light. The halfway point being the Flanagan Tap House and Farm, which is literally the halfway point between Elturel and Baldur's Gate. Okay. Um, you all do risk exhausting your horses riding that far in one day, but it can be done. I think so, that's going to be the plan. All right. Um, so. At the outpost, is there anything specific that you all would like to do? It is a barracks. There's mo it's mostly just a bunch of bunk beds, um, training grounds. There is weapon stores that are all locked. Um, again, hey, kitchens feeling. locked, everything. Uh, Bucky, you probably have keys to all this stuff, or at least know where to find them. Mm -hmm. Any healing think... potions or stores of that stuff? Like... There would be a supply of emergency healing potions. Who's got the I think we need to take these. Uh, if you I... all think this qualifies as an emergency, Bucky would probably yes. be able to get them. Yeah, yeah. this definitely is. Okay. There would so be. So I think four first thing. No. Do we want to have someone do group loot? I can write group loot down. Oh, thank you, Mel, keeper of the glutes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... And I do also have a healing potion that I recovered off of one of the cultists. Okay. So that makes it where we have five total. We have five total party um, party potions. Yeah. Uh, I already Just have one. one then? Uh, I already have one, so if everyone else wants to snag one of the others, feel free. Now, I apologize, Sean. While we're raiding the, um, I mean, gathering supplies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wow, you're just going to raid our base like this? Do we find anything uh, super useful, like perhaps pitons or um, immovable rods? <laughs> Those uh, are the two things I look out for. <laughs> no magic items or anything like that. Um, yeah, they would have definitely taken anything like that with them if they had been called on an emergency mission like that. But um, basic pitons? supplies can be found aplenty. Pitons. Would there be any, like, uh, post boards with recent happenings or just somewhere where there may be 
information that Ferris um, could look through. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Well, yeah, you would know where the captain's desk is at. And heading over there and looking through it, you would see the summons on the desk that called all the Hell Riders. It was signed by Fabius Krieg, the High Overseer of El Terrell. And it called for all Hell Riders, no exceptions, to enter into the city. While well, everyone is pretty much looting this guard post, you said there was um, training grounds? Yes, yes, there like, is. When he's out back, is there like a, like a dummy yep, out there? Cool. She has her long sword katana just silent, chopping, like practicing, flipping, shooting, but like shooting arrows, like full on training mode, like not talking to anyone. Grace's scarf still wrapped around her neck, like covering the bottom half of her face. Okay. I think uh, um, Bucky would want to spend some time as we're settling in. Just lighting torches, making sure any banners are displayed, making this look like a occupied, welcoming place for any refugees who might find their way yeah. here. Okay. Um, Anna would definitely be trying to make her pray, make contact with her deity. Okay. This is big. This is big. Uh. Yeah. Emma. Uh, I'm assuming that there will. I'm assuming that there would possibly be a longbow, arrows, and also some crossbow bolts to replenish the crossbow bolts that already expended. Correct. Okay. Would it be safe for um, uh, the the thought I'm uh, Ferris is having is using prestidigitation to do like a signal flare or something to kind of as a waypoint for the oncoming people. But would that be safe? Well, so I, I wouldn't want to all are universally track visible, on, you know. <laughs> so I, mean, I guess that's really up to all of you. I mean, Ferris Bucky's would... already walking around lighting this place up as much as he can. Yeah. Winnie don't know what's going on. She out back, letting out I, some anger. I, I would, uh, Ferris would ask Bucky and uh, Bucky's opinion as a Hell Rider. Uh, cause I, you know, with the, the warrior of bringing unwanted attention with it, but, um, I mean, are there any other NPCs here? Like, can we set people on the walls to watch? It is abandoned. No, we made it here before any of the other people did. Um, it appears that, well, go ahead and make an investigation check. Everyone? Uh, whoever would like to investigate. To see what you can, to see if, uh... Good job. Man, these rolls are not good today. <laughs> Getting the bad ones out of the way early. He makes sense. Well, just saw a whole city... Here. Saw a whole city there completely fall down. And with a level... Anna, with a level 214, <laughs> you can, um... kind of suss out that you were not the first ones here. Some people did try to half-heartedly break into the building, but... Uh, they, they didn't have the keys, I see. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what, yeah, screw it. Given that, I, th I think Ferris would use press digitation to essentially do a, a large single uh, signal flare in the hopes that it would be a beacon I mean, of hope for refugees. We're not planning on refugees. staying. Okay. We're not so, planning on staying, and walls are better than nothing for people. Yeah, I, I take it we're gonna leave it all open for them to so, take um, refuge here. So, I just saw a flare go off, and she's gonna go stand on the wall that faces the fields of the dead. Uh, all right. Yep. <laughs> okay. Anna, as you are up there, the first thing that you notice is a bit of steam rising up off of yourself as it begins to rain. Why not put the shit cherry on top of this day? Yep, that's pretty, uh... 
That tracks. All right. So, Winnie, within a few seconds, it, the rain does begin to pour down onto you. Your strikes cutting through drops as they fall. She keeps going because the rain is hiding her crying. <laughs> the worst. Right. Okay, everybody. We can now assume that at some point within the next six hours or so, you all take your long rests. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, any of you don't do that. In which case, just let me know. And yeah. you can make a constitution saving throw. Um, I imagine I'm not the only one keeping watch. Like, we, we, we're going to take uh, shifts? Yeah, we'll take shifts. Yeah, That's when a... he would take a shift. Ferris would very much like a long rest as he had traveled all the way from Baldur's Gate to Eltriel and then uh, immediately went on that word. Okay. <laughs> He's <All> tired. Right. <laughs> so, whoever is on the last watch... Actually, let's go ahead and do it this way. Who's on the first watch? Anna. Anna, go ahead and make a perception check. Nice. Oh, Anna. Mm -hmm. Anna, you see something strange out of the corner of your eye as you look around. You can't quite put your finger on it, but something, something shifted out there. Or out there itself shifted. It's hard to pinpoint, it's hard to put your mind, your, to wrap your head around what exactly happened, but... Whoever follows her, she's just going to tell them to be vigilant. Okay. And now, who's got the last watch? Winnie will take the last watch. Okay. Winnie... Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, Anna would have made Winnie sleep at some point. Or at least lay down. Okay. Yeah, she she laid down, like, okay. eventually, but she would have the taken mom, the second watch. The mom okay. vibes are hard. Winnie appreciates it. <laughs> okay, so as dawn begins to break, Winnie, the first thing that you notice, um, go ahead and make a perception check first. Okay, so with a 14, um, you hear it before you see it. The rain is still falling, but as you look off to the east, you see what looks like looks like a caravan. Um, you see the tops of several wagons breaking over. Um, and at the front of this, you see a pair of Hellriders. One of them is Rhea. They will be reaching the fort within the hour. I... get ready to bring her in. Only a pair? Kind of. From at the front of the column, yeah. Uh oh. I was like, hold on a second. Yeah, Whitney just waves her down, letting her know that they're there. Okay. Okay, so it is the following morning, everybody. The rain continues to fall. Storm is a ruin. Is there anything you all wanted to do at this outpost before you head out? And he's gonna eat some jerky and get on our horse and wait for everybody. I am loaded down with ball bearings and pecans. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should ask um, Rhea if any, uh, there were any complications with finding anybody or if they got any new information. Okay. So once uh, once they see Winnie waving from the parapets, um, Rhea would heal her heal her horse and um, begin making her way at a rather quick gallop towards you. Um, she would ask for if anybody was here, and upon giving you all the answers, upon giving her the answer, she would go on to tell you that they've gathered as many people as they could from around the outskirts of El Terrell. They've got a good thousand people behind her. Between the outlying villages, um, the homes that were just outside of the city, and those lucky survivors that were barely able to escape the catastrophe. Has anyone said anything about what happened? I mean, they were there when it happened. So she would tell you that the reports from any survivors that were close enough to have made it out are the same. The ground shifted violently beneath everybody's feet. The next thing, all they all they knew was heat and the smell of sulfur. 
Does that give us any clues or hints as to what just happened? Like, are we aware that it was pulled to hell, or are we just... The the hints have been there. Um, if So as far as when you first saw it happen, you got that blast of heat and the smell of sulfur. You saw okay. the chains rocket up out of the ground and then yes. drag the city down. So it can be assumed, but you have not had any official confirmation. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, you're good. Uh, I think we've learned what we need to learn. Yeah. I suppose we should start heading to Baldur's okay. Gate if there's nothing else. Yes. All right, everybody. So, if you want to make this ride a two-day ride instead of a three-day ride, I will need con checks from everybody. Con saving throws from everybody. I think we should do that. All right, no whammy. Uh, check or save? Save. Oh. Okay. I'm not good with horses. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Okay. So, riding hard through the entire day, pushing yourselves and your horses to the breaking points. A full 18 hours of just hard riding. And Anna, Anna and Tiberius, you both would know that you are coming up fast on the Flannery Farm and Aylory. It is the common stopping point, and the only place for miles around with walls, fire, and food. Anna, Ferris, and Bucky, you all do suffer one level of exhaustion from the ride. How do we um, mark that on our sheets? I believe there's an exhaustion tracker on the character sheet. I'll have to double check. Roll 20 ever decides to work. I think it's in the in the settings part. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you have to turn it on and then you can it's right above where your spell casting would be. Show exhaustion. Got it. Thank awesome. you. Uh, I'm gonna need a little help on that. You have to go into your um, uh, where it says core bio spells, and then there's a gear. Okay, click the gear. Click the gear, and then to the far um, left, uh, far right. Sorry, just go down that first list right above the character mancer, and work your way up that list, and it says show exhaustion tracking. Turn it on. Ah. Got it? All right. Awesome. And then it, then it shows up in uh, your core thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Okay. And you should be able to just click it up to one. Yes. I it. already have disadvantage on ability checks. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So, after a hard day of writing doing your best to reach Baldur's Gate as quickly as possible. Um, night does begin to fall again. Full day of charging ahead. You do approach one of the only places with roofs and beds. Do you all wish to stop or do you all wish to continue on? We should probably stop, guys. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we should stop, to. and also uh, question if anybody else has passed through. I was thinking, warn this place, they're about to get swarmed by refugees, yeah, and too. tell them to prepare to feed as many mouse as they can. Yes, also for those non-selfish reasons. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, um, Anna and Tiberius, the two of you would notice um, rather quickly as you approach the Flannery farm that there's no one there. It appears empty for the first time you have ever seen this place. Anybody that travels this road frequently or, or um, hangs out in the 
high in the uh, in the hills surrounding this central area would recognize this place and probably been here a few times. Uh, Flannery Farm is always packed, always got people there. There's always travelers moving up and down the roads. Um, but there's no light coming from inside currently. There's no movement. There's certainly no horses hitched out front. Um, this is unusual. This place is never empty, never unlit. I take it Ferris probably would have passed through there on his way to Eltriol. Right, you with. probably passed through once or twice, but I, I doubt you'd be on the same first name basis with the owner that uh, yeah, Anna yeah. and Tiberius would be. I imagine it had people when he passed through right. on his way to Eltriol, though. Yep, there was certainly a lot of people here when you passed through last. I'm going to recommend we go slowly and cautiously here, see, make sure everything's all right before we go barging in. Yep. Anna is very uncomfortable, like visibly uncomfortable. Bucky's gonna draw his uh, weapon just to be safe. Good idea. We don't really know what's happening. Okay. As you all Going make your way, to... go ahead. Oh, Winnie would just probably hop off her horse because she's more useful off her horse than on it um, and have just like a small dagger dart in hand ready to throw it at the first thing that moves. Okay. So, as you all make your way towards the front of the establishment, making heading up the, the wooden staircase, first thing that you see is piled on the deck on the entryway just before you get into the building are about six corpses. Do we recognize any of them? You do not. And as you look at them, Anna, they appear to be in various stages of decomposition. Dirty, filthy, as if they'd pulled themselves up out of the ground. The dead have been here. Does Winnie recognize any of them? No, you do not. Okay. Are they dead dead or undead dead is the real question. Um, as you begin looking at them and kind of going over them, you can see that each of them has at least one heavy crossbow bolt embedded into them somewhere. Do any of them have any um, sigils or signs of being affiliated with um, either a cult or the Flaming Fist or any organization? Make a history check. Oh my god. There's symbology, uniforms, clothing that you don't recognize, but nothing that says anything specific to you. I thought I was proficient in history. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, you were. <laughs> you, rolled a, you rolled a one. That one level of exhaustion. Holy one <laughs> twice. Double crit fail. Oof. Uh, I would like to very carefully and cautiously listen at the door. Make I'm standing check. right behind her. Hear nothing. Quiet anyone as the grave. Ah, oh, stop it. Um, anyone object to me opening the door? Can Bucky or... use divine sense near the front door? Sure. Nice. Sixty feet. Sixty feet. You sense nothing within sixty feet of you. Are there any windows we can look through? Lots of them. <laughs> oh, wow, well, yeah, I think we should start there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Ferris, whatever happened. Through a window. Okay. Make a perception check. Uh, use a perception. Yep. Jesus. You don't notice anything. Uh, it is dark inside. There are no candles lit. 
there's certainly no fireplace or anything like that lit. I think it's safe to go in. Um, even if it's not, we need somewhere to stay and better inside a house than out of the dirt. Let's go in, but keep our... Let's not light anything up too much. No flares. As we have a walking fire walk in. <laughs> Ferris's hands already glowing, ready to go. Oh, yeah, I was already thinking, oh yeah, just light all the candles with press the digitation real quick. <laughs> so who's first in? Uh, Bucky no. will go first. Oh, no, Bucky. Or Anna can. No, no, Bucky go. <laughs> so you open the door and step into the darkened room. You hear the creak of floorboards and the wild yell of an old man. Back to the shadow with you, you undead bastards! And a crossbow bolt goes whizzing by your head, Bucky. And you see a old man wearing a a long wet a long leather duster and a very large hat. And he's he's got his That's crossbow bolt out as up. you all burst through as you all enter through the door. And he seems to have dropped down and is loading up another bolt. What's his name? Wait, 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 wait. We're no undead. We come from whatever's El left of El Terrell. His name is... Your Hell Rider. <laughs> his name is Flannery. Flannery, you old bastard! Put the bow and arrow down! <laughs> the giant hat pops up over the, over the seat that he's hiding behind. Anna! Is that you?! Yeah, you want to poke some holes in me. By the gods, get in here! Close the door! Everyone goes inside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, Winnie. Bucky so Flannery got a 17 to hit you. Wow. He barely missed you. <laughs> oh my god. It's good I went first. <laughs> be a good way to start the night off with a crossbow to bolt uh, that was a had a rough. once and then I took a crossbow bolt to the knee <laughs> uh -huh. at least you didn't crit right <laughs> okay so find ourselves now in Flannery's farm Seeing you all, how heavily armed you all you all are. Um, he hasn't lit any candles or anything yet, but he's looking around and says, What in the bloody nine hells is happening out there? There's been people running by, horses charging by like they're running from the bloody nine hells itself. They are. Well, they might be. He looks towards you. Very funny, very funny. What's happening? We're not in entirely certain, but the city of El Torrell is now no longer here. What, it was attacked? Is it under siege? Should we send for the guards? No. Not exactly. It's gone. There's nothing left. There's just a hole where the city once stood. When we returned from a mission we'd been sent on, sent on last night, we arrived in time to see Uh, we watched Eldritch chains Snow. pull it down. <laughs> There's nothing left. Chains and lightning flying from the companion and everything else, and it's as if there's just this giant bowl within the earth where it was scooped out. Alright. He would kind of sink down into his chair. By the gods. Gone. And he kind of reaches down and you all hear a pop as he pulls up a prosthetic leg and pulls a cap out of it. Pours himself a drink. You got more alcohol behind that bar? He nods. Hops up. Pops his leg back on. Heads Don't up worry. Bar. I got it. And Winnie just hops behind the bar and starts making drinks for everybody. Help yourself. She feels, a little... yourself, whatever's she back feels at home. <laughs> she just Already starts pouring drinks. drinks. Oh, look, she's a barmaid. 
She's doing her thing. This is Yeah, I guess so. I didn't think about that. She's still quiet, just <sighs> pouring well drinks for everyone. We were gonna tell you to be ready for some uh, refugees and people passing through. Try to have you take care of them, but it seems like you're in rough shape on all on your own. <laughs> would ask him uh, what exactly happened here. Where is everybody? He says, well, it was a night same as any other night before last, but there was this strange lightning in the sky. This The fields of the dead lit up like fireworks. It was wondrous to behold until we saw what was moving around in there. So you were attacked by a horde I've had it. I've had it easy. It's those poor travelers on the road that have been hit the hardest. It's almost like they were waiting for them out there. Damn it. He looks towards you in Tiberius. Are your, are your children safe? They were in the city when it was taken. Anna can't even respond to it. By the gods. We hope so, but well, rest, eat, drink, whatever you need. Here, Dad, you told him that there's. You said you let him know to expect people, right? You told him there's a there's refugees think, coming. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned there's people coming. We were hoping he'd be able to uh, take care of them, but yes, yes, of course, of course, we have plenty it's here for anyone like that needs to stop by. If, well, are they are they as well protected as you lot? I mean, there's, there's a lot of them. About a thousand refugees and three Hellriders. A thousand? That's all that made it out of the city. That we know of. There might be more, but that's all that um, my allies are able to find. Well, between my stores and my farm, I can see that they're at least fed for the time that they're here. But they'll need to head to a more secure location. I presume we, they're heading towards Baldur's Gate. We plan to we, we plan to head to Baldur's Gate ahead, and I'm going to speak with my uh, colleagues over at the uh, Flaming Fist to see if we can set something up for them. On that note, do you happen to know anything about the Cult of the Dead Threes? There's a few dead bodies on my porch. It's a dead three outside. <laughs> Winnie's gonna bring everyone some ale and just plop down the table and take a seat by the fire. Not really talk. Still, not really talking too much. Paris would press further. Of the people that were here over the past few days, does anybody seem out of place? Perhaps uh, cut up faces? Cut up faces? Well, no. No, there was there was a wagon. I was prepared. I saw them coming from quite a, quite some distance. It was as well. It was about. It was the same day that I saw this one come through. And he points towards you. For, he points towards you, Ferris. Mm. It's about an hour after you left. Hour or two, maybe. Another wagon came driving by in the opposite direction, heading towards Baldur's Gate. Finally appointed. All the windows blacked. It was very strange. I expected it to be some sort of dignitary or something, but they just rode right on by and they didn't stop for a moment. Hmm. Interesting. If that's the case and they're further ahead of us than we had thought... They must have already grabbed that treasure that was uh, spoken of in the note long before we got out there. Well, presumably, but if but we are at least upon the right track. All we can do is rest for the eve and, well, follow them upon the morn and see if we can cut the distance some. Um, think so. 
nods. Well, Reed. I'll surely sleep better tonight knowing that I won't be spending the night here alone again. Things scratching at the walls at night. I've had to dispatch a few of them myself. Is that where the ones outside came from? Indeed, straggling in one at a time. Just wandering in mm. from the fields. You're not a bad shot. I was quite the archer back in my day, yes. Lucky for you, not quite as good as I used to be, eh? Uh, <laughs> you're lucky it was me who answered the door. Or opened the door. Winnie chuckles a little bit. Very, very well. Very good, very good. Well, there's rooms upstairs and have all the food and food and ale that you need. And in the morning, I'll begin preparations for the thousand or so survivors. Is there any chance you have fresh horses for us? You, we worked ours pretty hard today. He nods. Of course, of course. Take whatever you need. Thank you. Anna, as you ask about the horse, thunderclap, loud, close, shakes the walls. Hear a bit of, hear a bit of glassware rattling, and on the heels of that thunderclap, you hear what sounds like a horse neigh. Interesting. Is that like, in? Is that weird? <laughs> like, what? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Horses don't like noise. Um, can she go to the window and look? Sure. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I will look. Well, do I see, do I see anything um, horse like? I guess or so. Okay. Anna, as you go to look out that window. Lightning strikes, illuminating the wide open fields to the south of the tavern. You see what first looks like people, maybe even the caravan catching up to you early, but then lightning strikes again and you can see that you can see through a lot of them, light shining through them at weird places and weird locations. And standing near the back of all of these figures is one mounted individual riding back and forth. Like he's trying to herd them? Do you have military experience? Oh, she's a war priestess. I mean, like and she's fucking a war, cool. war goddess. Okay. Um, so you recognize this as, yes, a bit of herding, but it's more the way that a captain would push a bunch of lowly foot soldiers across a line. There's about... More than a dozen of them out there, slowly marching towards Flannery's Tavern. She's gonna throw back the rest of her drink and uh, turn to the room and be like, we have company, and not the kind we, pre we prefer. When you say that, you hear a window at the back of the tavern shatter. And we're gonna take a break. Arm yourselves! Arm yourselves. <laughs> So we are back. You all have made your way to the Flannery Ale House and Farm after a grueling day of hard travel, pushing your horses nearly to the limit. You have stopped to rest. Unfortunately, things have not been great at the Flannery Farm. Um, he has been dealing with intermittent but manageable undead attacks. As he was explaining this to you all, and you all were explaining to him the tragedy that just befell Elturel. Anna went to the window to investigate a strange noise outside and saw a concerning number of skeletal creatures lurching towards the building. And as she turned to inform the rest of you of this danger approaching, you all heard a window shatter at the back of the bar. And that is where we are now. And now we will roll initiative.
might as well be playing if I play this was on random. This is a good one. <laughs> I'm never gonna get over how awkward it is having a negative point nine two. I always forget that I have to <laughs> click on myself first. What was it negative? Negative dash modifier. The... Yeah. Oh, Bucky. Oh, Bucky. <laughs> he's he's not, uh, he's not delicate, to say the least. <laughs> That's what this horse is for. Exactly. I did enjoy the fact that Rhea, his like direct competitor, was using crossbows and super dexterous. <laughs> He's just like, ah, I'm just gonna run up and hit him. The exact opposite. Winnie, you've heard the glass mm -hmm. shatter. You've heard Anna. Um, Anna, I had you over by this window as the window you looked out of. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no okay. of the southern windows. Thank you. No problem. Any of the southern windows is fine, though. And they're coming from... Um, so... Oh. Uh, Anna, could you move your token? I could, yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. Um, so, um, the windows that Anna's looking out of to the south, she saw several of them making their way from that direction towards... That is where the mounted figure is riding back and forth behind a line of shambling undead. The windows that you heard shatter are at the... The window that you heard shatter is at the back of the tavern. Um, Flannery would pop up to his feet and grab his heavy crossbow from his side. So they're coming from right here, right? They are coming from, from the back of the building. Cool. And the so... back. Oh, and... Oh. Okay. The ones back that are in the front will take about a round to reach you. If that helps. Cool. When he's gonna shift into her for um more bestial form and i get my additional 10 feet of movement which makes my movement now 50 feet Ooh, nice and i'm gonna move in the quickest line straight to this path that is ridiculously fast jump on yeah. <laughs> monks baby um just jump on the bar counter with my sword out ready to swipe at the first thing that comes in here do you realize you're as fast as a riding horse? <laughs> and almost as fast as Bucky yes. on his war horse? Yes, I do. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. <laughs> now you just Monks. need cutting kind of action so you can double move. Monks, baby. Okay. Um, yeah, is there anything coming in the window yet? Um, so there's a door here. Oh, shit. There is a door here, and you heard you heard the glass shatter from one of these back doors. So you don't see anything yet, but it's safe to assume that something's coming through this area over here. Cool. I will hold my action until something comes within this door, because that should be ten feet within front with me and Got with it. my long sword. I have ten feet. Right. Do I? Uh, with your longsword, no. Longsword's five foot. Five foot? Okay, so I would have jumped there then. Got it. Got it, got it. And I'm okay. just at the ready. Got it. Okay. okay. Anna. Um, looking out the window, can I... How far away is the man on the is the thing on the horse? The man on the horse is a good two hundred feet away at this point. And how close are the shambling thingies? The closest, the closest shambling thingies that you can see are about sixty feet away. 
Lovely. at their dash, they will reach the house, the bar, at the start of the next round. Um, I am going to fire my light crossbow out the... Okay. So you have a choice. Do you shoot at the ones you can see through or the ones you can't see through? I'm sorry, the... The dead things I can see through? Yes. So as lightning flashes behind them, several of them are showing, like, gaps in their bodies. Yes. While some of them are not. Okay, then I'm going to fire at the ones I can see through until I can, like, verify that the solid ones are actually dead. Okay. Oh, give me a break. Ten does not hit. Your arrow disappears into the darkness. Goodbye, arrow. Um, hold on. I totally have bonus actions. This is the only part about roll 20 that frustrates me is I can't tell what's bonus and what's not off, like, immediately. Right. Um. No, you know what? I, I'm done. All right. Okay. Ferris, what do you do? Oh, wait, no, sorry. There was one thing. I did miss something. One moment. Oh, yeah, the my first initiative. No, no, no. no. There's, actually, there's actually enemies in the initiative that you all currently cannot see. So I let's go ahead and your fix that real quick. Stand by. And they do act just before you, Ferris. So bear with me for one moment, please. Yeah, okay. Oh! I okay, here we go. I can do. Stupid. Okay. So, Winnie, you would be the first one to hear a glass crunching beneath feet as something unseen moves towards you in this room. You also hear another window shatter. It seems to be coming from this direction. Guys, I might need some help back here. And another window shatters. And you all hear that coming from this place right over this way. Okay. Okay. Winnie. Winnie. You hear more of that crunching underfoot, and then the knob to the door directly in front of you here begins to work back and forth slowly as if somebody's confusedly trying to operate the mechanism when the door swings open. And you see what looks like a soldier at first begin to walk through, but as they come through, you see that there is no flesh on this individual. They are dirty, they are filthy, they appear to have clawed their way up and out of the dirt not too long ago. Enters in through the door and brandishes a short sword at you. Uh, swipe at it. Your reaction, yep. Yeah. Ooh, 12. 12 does not hit. It raises its short sword and parries your blow away before striking out at you. That is only a 7 to hit. Ha, <laughs> doesn't hit. All right, and okay, movement elsewhere in the building. You all begin to hear that same sound of glass crunching under feet moving through several different places inside of the structure as more of these skeletal soldiers break windows and pull themselves into the building. That now brings us to Ferris. Ferris will take a step here to better view the uh, zombie thing there and then he is going to raise his staff and he is going see a ray of frost shoot from it to the zombie. <coughs> hey, that's actually a good roll. Nice, oh, 24 yeah. hits. Which one are you shooting at? 
Uh, this one over here that just walked in. Roll up damage. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Ah. Okay. Three cold. Fantastic. So, the race strikes it squarely in the chest. You all see frost beginning to form over its body, but it is still very much moving in. Anybody else? And I don't think I have any uh, bonus actions available to me, actually. Oh, I should have done that earlier in the day. I don't think I can have uh, do one of my uh, infusions right now, can I? Um, I believe infusions require time. Like an action. Well, I don't know how the Arthas or infusions work exactly. Let me take a look. I do think you need to. I do think it's a downtime thing. I don't think it's a mid combat thing. Uh, I think it's Hank, a long rest. Having recently played an artificer, they're usually set up beforehand. Generally speaking, whenever you generally speaking, you pick which infusions you know and empower whatever stuff you're gonna have at the start of the day. Okay, so okay. it's not a or, not a mid combat thing. Or, it takes. No, yeah. he, he should already have it. Yeah. Okay. Like if he, if you had it, if you since we were actually resting, since we've actually rested at a place, you should have had some to do with there. Assuming um, your character would have thought which about ones did you do it. So of the four, I have the two I was I was originally going to do homunculus servant, but I don't have the means for that one. Okay, it was yeah, going to be that, and um, it. it was going to be that and enhanced arcane focus. But I guess uh, we could assume enhanced arcane focus and yep, then. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Enhanced defense on, um, was it, who had the shield? Was it Bucky or Tiberius? Uh, I think they both wield shields, right? I think we I both think we, have. I know Bucky does. Tiberius has one, too. Uh, just, uh, if you... You can give it to Tiberius. Bucky yeah, for, is... For I, his would stick it, I would actually put it on Bucky because I I do at least have a plus two to dex where I can shoot stuff from at least a little bit of a distance if I have to. Okay, then we'll do uh, an inst uh, we'll say Send uh, it to in the morning I had I had enhanced yeah. shield for the day. Sounds good. That's uh what plus one? Yep. Uh, nice. I believe so. Cool, up it's bucket at twenty. Thank you. Alright, anything else from Ferris? Uh that'll do it. I Fantastic. don't think I have anything else I can do. Does it bring us to Flannery? who is going to pull off his... He's going to pull up his crossbow, and he's going to shout at the skeleton coming through the door, Get out of my bar, you bastard! And let loose with his crossbow. And this, I love this guy already. Again. <laughs> okay. Does bring us to Bucky. Um, oh, here, here's Flannery, Bucky. by the way, in case anyone wanted to see what he looks like. <laughs> I like his hat. Yeah. So it is... Uh, you know... know like an Abraham Lincoln stove hat. <laughs> I want to be like Flannery when I become a cranky old man. <laughs> I am Flannery as a cranky old man. <laughs> so I think Bucky is going to run up to this doorway where they're crawling in and yell out to Winnie to see if she's okay. I'm fine. And... Just protect the others. We'll see. Uh, bonus action, he's gonna cast Shield of Faith on Winnie. Uh, what's that do? Plus two to AC. Hell yeah, my AC is now 18. Nice, nice. Gotta keep her safe. And then for an action, he is going to bring his Morningstar down on this zombie. Nice. 21 hits. Great. 21. Ah! Um, and I do believe that the bludgeoning piercing. damage... Oh, piercing, okay. Piercing. Piercing damage, alright. Strikes into the skeletal creature. Knocks away several of its bones from its ribcage. They go flying across the room, but it is still moving. Alright, and that is going to be Bucky's turn. Tiberius. I'm, uh... Tiberius, uh, finishes the last bit of his ale looks at the situation and uh st and uh, with Bucky in the doorway there 
turns his attention to the one in the back and uh, fires off his light crossbow right quick at that one. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Which one uh, you want it? The one beside Winnie. Okay. Uh, just because Bucky's right in the doorway and I'd be a little tricky to shoot past him. Wow, that's a really so good like... damage roll, too. Winnie right. will duck out of the way. Yep, just as you duck, the arrow crashes into the skeletal skull and it kind of swings around blindly for a couple moments, missing most of its head before dropping into a heap on the ground. I'm, uh... And with that, uh... Hmm. With that, my character is going to stand up and, uh, seeing... not seeing any other enemies except for the one right in front of Bucky and having heard his uh, wife say that there could be potential trouble coming from this way mm -hmm. he's going to take a bonus action to reload that to uh, reload that crossbow and 15 15 he's probably I'm going to get about right here so I can actually look out the window a little bit, maybe uh what do I see out this window? You see something very concerning, Tiberius. You see, getting closer and closer, a lot of shambling figures moving towards the building. Hmm. Well, my dear, I have a feeling that yourself and our and Bucky are probably going to be the most useful in this brawl. I think we're all going to have find a use tonight. Uh, uh, and with that, uh, he will just, uh, how, uh, how far away are the creatures? They are currently about 20 to 25 feet off the map to the south. Okay, uh, I'm assuming, and you said they look like they're probably going to be at the uh, tavern by next turn? Yep. Okay. Would my character have any knowledge as far as, like, weaknesses of skeletons or anything of that nature? Tell me about a time you fought skeletons before. Well, I don't know, I don't try to, I try not to assume what I've fought or anything. <laughs> well... I mean, you have been an adventurer for some time. Would there have been a situation that come up in Tiberius's past where he might have needed to fight one of these? I mean, you and Anna both live in the fields of the inner, around the fields of the dead, right? His main thought is what. His main thought is what weapon does he have on him that can break bone the easiest? Yeah, I think it so would be safe he... to assume that you would be of the knowledge that bludgeoning damage does some good work against these things. Okay. He's gonna break out his flail. He's gonna break out his flail instead of his uh, long sword. Then, <laughs> nice. Yeah, skeletons and just like these co super common things, goblins. I, I, I usually feel like it's safe to assume that somebody that's been adventuring for a good amount of time would know about these kind of things. What? Well, like, well, like I, well, like I know the logic that I would, like I had, because I wasn't sure if they had any vulnerability to it. Or not, but I was thinking, well, if you're gonna break a bone, you want something like a hammer <laughs> right okay so now new sounds begin to drift through the air moaning undead wails begin to fill the air and you when you hear a thud as something pulls itself through the window and falls you hear just a as something gets up and begins walking towards you through that way. Through which way? Same way that the first skeleton came through. Cool. Alright, Winnie's ready to take action. Alright. This is fine. Everything is fine. Okay. And with that, the shamblers at the front of the building begin to come clearly into view. Come closer. Excellent. 
Winnie. And I heard that coming in from here, right? You heard something thump and then groan as it got up and started walking towards you. Cool. So Winnie's going to hop in there to see. Sorry, y'all. Y'all don't know. Winnie shouts out, I'm going to get this thing. I'll be back. And runs into it. Okay. And I'm going to take a swipe with my long sword. Nice. Because I don't know anything because I have never fought skeletons in my life. All right. Uh, this is very much not a skeleton. There is rotting flesh hanging off of it. It appears to have only been dead for maybe at most a few months. I've never fought undead things. Awesome. Uh, that does strike into it. Cool. For five slashing. Okay. Now, Winnie, you deliver a blow that would have just killed any normal person outright, slamming straight down into its collarbone. Your blade embeds deep into this zombie. It does not seem to have noticed. You, it's hurt. You damaged it. Cut away a good chunk of it, but it just moans and reaches out towards you again. Cool, well, and then I'm going to spend a key point to bonus action flurry of bows. Nice. And make two unarmed strikes at it. Nice. For 14, 14 and... So does nine. Nine hits? Nine hits. Six. So first one is four bludgeoning. Second one is another four bludgeoning. Okay. When so your hand total. sinks uncomfortably into this thing's flesh, it was way softer than you would have expected it to be. It comes away with this strange, like, black, fleshy poop on it. <laughs> you just hear Winnie kind of like not throw up fully, but just like gag. Um, the fleshy ones. Super gross. <laughs> All right. Start everybody dry heaving. <laughs> yeah, just like, the loudest dry heave you ever heard in your life. Anything else um, for winning? No, that's it because I can't do anything else. Okay. On it. Anna has been waiting very patiently for these MFers to get closer. And she is going to do this thing. Hold on, where are you? Uh, she is going to. It's not in my hand. Hold on, I'm sorry, guys. It's... You're good. Totally fine. Uh, Channel Divinity, Turn Undead. Oh, you get ch Turn Undead at level 1. I forgot about that. Yes. Very cool. Okay, so what's the distance? 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay. So, we, uh, Anna, I'm going to put these ones on the screen now. They are still between 20 and 25 feet to the south, but they are within range would they be in range if they're 20 to 25 feet to the south? No. Yes, 30, 30 feet. Right, but they 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 don't get to here yet. The skeletons yeah. are still back there. So the oh, skeletons okay. get there on this turn. So you do get all of the zombies that made their way up there, um, right. but not quite the skeletons. Anna, they are moving towards you. So I will let you hold your action to channel divinity once the most of them are within range of you. Being a war player, that seems quite tactical. I'll be, that'd be really great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to use my bonus action, please, okay. to cast uh, Shield of Faith on Tibbs. Okay. Cool, Tommy. Okay. So, anything else before we move on to the skeleton's turn and you can and your held action? Uh, nope. Fantastic. Take a step back. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, Anna, you see this wave of undead moving towards you, and... They are dragging, some of them are dragging spears behind them, others are just moaning. It appears that there's just a mix of just regular dead folk that were, might have been farmers or shopkeeps mixed in with soldiers, all just moving mindlessly towards the bar. Um, the skeletons do make their way up. They start trying to climb up and over the balcony to try and get to the windows. And your channel infinity goes off. What is the DC? Uh, that's a great question. Hang on one second. Mm-hmm. 
Probably 13 if you maxed out your wisdom. Um, is it just, is it just a regular spell save DC? Yep, your spell save DC. Oh, okay. 12, I'm sorry. Okay, 12. got it. Sorry. No problem. Okay, so DC 12 wisdom save for every undead within 30 feet that can hear you. that only gets the one at the front the ones at the front of the building. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Here we go. Any chance, it, any chance it gets the uh the big guy? No. He is still on his horse too far away. Okay. He is yeah. notably not advancing with the rest of them. He is standing back and watching. He knows. Go exciting. Normal roll, DC 12, no damage, but we'll go ahead and put a red light on anybody that is turned. So here we go. And it is a non zero number, that is for sure. Okay. Anna, what does it look like when you cast Turn Undead? Um, it looks like a black fire that just sort of like radiates outward from me in 30 feet. Fantastic. Doesn't hurt anyone to live alive, just the dead ones. Fantastic. So as this dark flame kind of pulses out from you, radiating out towards these undead, it washes over them, and you see several of them just stop, dead in their tracks, turn around, and begin to walk away. Every one of these creatures that has a red mark on it has been turned. Okay, it's a bunch of them. Yeah, it's a lot of them. You got, you got like, what, half of them with that? Yeah, it looks like it. Nice, okay. Yeah, you got exactly half of them. Hell yeah. What does that mean with a turn? They just... They, they have to spend... Feet they have to spend the next minute actively running away from Ana. Okay. All they can do is run away from her for the next minute, which in combat turns is fucking forever. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is, um... It is, I believe... Or like ten five rounds. seconds yeah, ten turn rounds. or something. Yeah, so it's a full ten rounds. They have to turn around and walk the opposite direction. Basically removes them from combat for this for this combat, which is really good. Okay. That does bring us to the ones that are already in the building, though. And this door over here creaks open, and a shambling, skeletal farmer comes lurching out, carrying... What looks like what looks like just a pitchfork dragging behind him, but he's gonna lift it up and stab it right at Flannery. Ooh, and Put on a towel, man. No. Alright. Flannery is going to cry out and curse quite a bit. Okay. Bucky, the one in front of you, lashes out at you with a short sword. There's only a 12 to hit. Will not hit. Brings us back yeah. around to Ferris. Okay. Um. I got a couple of options here. I think... Yeah, I think he's going to... Uh... Go ahead and cast Ray of Frost again on, uh... Oh, crap, I'm not on that right now. On this uh, zombie right here. Got it, got it. So he pulls up his staff and a Ray of Frost. Where did it go? There it is. Yeah. Eight does not hit that one, unfortunately. Um... Oof. And then he takes a step back, and yeah, I guess it's yeah, that's uh, that does it. Okay. All right, it's going to bring us around to Flannery. Now, has anybody mentioned to him that there is a horde of undead at the front of his building? Yeah, I, I sort of told everyone that they were incoming. Okay, he would shout out to you, Tiberius. Bar the door. Next to the door, there is a large crossbeam laying on its side next to the door. Tiberius. 
Darius. He shouts that out to you before turning around and striking out at the skeleton that just stabbed him. So, he puts down his heavy crossbow and grabs the chair next to him and begins bashing at this thing with a hit and a hit for 12 bludgeoning damage, um, which wow. doubles to 24 bludgeoning damage because this thing is a skeleton. <laughs> so you all see just Flannery just like shove this thing back off of him with the pitchfork and pick up one of the chairs next to him and just start beating the shit out of the skeleton with one of his chairs. He, he doesn't stop. He just continues beating away at it even after it stopped moving. Bucky? Wow. <laughs> uh, Bucky's going to bring his Morningstar down on this one that's right in front of him. Okay. A 13 hits. For 9 piercing damage. Fantastic. Bucky, you bring your Morningstar down, crashing right onto this thing's collarbone. It travels all the way through and out the other side to impact onto the ground. This thing crumbles and ceases moving. All right. And then he is going to move his 30 feet over here, try to defend Flannery. Okay. Hopefully when he's okay wherever she went, we don't really know. Yeah, um, you all saw when he just dis disappeared right. behind a door. And then hear a dry heave come from the room she disappeared into. I know. It's one of those, I hope she's okay. Um, a second later. Oh. I know. <laughs> and that'll be Bucky's turn. Tiberius, if you would like to bar the door, it will be a bonus action. Uh, I'm going to do so. Okay. Uh, and have any of the and I don't think any of these have actually made it close enough yet so uh I am going to hmm. well what I will probably do then is take one of my dexes and lob it at this one here that is not turned kind of in front of me and to the left. Okay. This one? Or this one? Uh, that one that you just clicked on. Got it. Thirteen hits. Uh, just... uh five slashing because I chucked it instead of... Got it. Doing it close range. <laughs> okay, knocks away a few of its bones. Still coming. Okay. Well, then I'll just, uh... I'll probably just take one, one single step back so I can see more of the room once they actually get here, if they try to come through windows. Okay. And, uh, get my flow, have my flow out, and just be... be ready to go. All right. right. on my face. The zombies at the front of the building do, in fact, begin lurching forward, pulling themselves up and over. This one goes over to the window and crashes it down, but he cannot make his way in yet. This one arrives at another window, breaks it down, and also comes crawling through. He kind of just leans over the window for long enough and far enough that he tumbles over and falls in. Broken glass may or may not have caused some pretty nasty wounds on his belly as he went over, but he doesn't seem to have noticed. These ones turn around and just begin to shamble away. Anna, as they do, you see the mounted riders stop. Are you standing there in front of the window? Yes. You see the face kind of turn over to look at you. See two red embers burning inside of an armored helmet. The rider then rides up to the zombies that you turned and strikes them down. I hope he knows that he's getting burning ember eyes right back at him. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, okay, so that is the front of the room zombies. Winnie, the one in front of you kind of just throws a slow meandering fist in your direction. That is a 14 to hit, Winnie. Did not hit. Fantastic. 
Right. And then also, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to use my, um, what's it called? My reaction to jump away 10 feet. I'm going to stay right here. Got it. Okay. Bucky, you see a shambling, rotting corpse making its way towards you. And another one following behind it. Bucky, another slow slam towards you with a 14 to hit. Does not hit. And that is the zombies. Brings us back to the top of the initiative and to Winnie. Well, Winnie's going to take another long um, sword strike. Oof. Five does not hit. Cool. Um, And then I'm going to... Am I going to do it? Am I, yeah, because Winnie's like... um, Gotta go! So I'm going to step of the wind. Okay. Um, use my last key point to disengage. Okay. Um, how, if my, what's my jump distance? If I have currently A 50. standing jump, I believe, is half your strength score. I'll have to double check that, though. Stand by. Mm. Movement, jumping. Strength determines how far you can jump. When you take make a long jump, you cover a feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet before the jump. Uh, so we'll say yeah. So that's just that's just we'll just say half your half your strength score is how far you can jump away from just a standing position. I cool, would also so allow gonna... dexterity. So I can do half of sixteen or half of ten. Yeah. So we'll round up too. So you can either do if you use. I'm assuming dexterity is your is your sixteen. Yeah. So if you use your dexterity, you can jump standing ten feet. Cool. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump 10 feet back. Okay. And then move 50 feet. So 5, 10. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to get to right about there okay and just be back see bucky fighting one of the squishy ones and be like yeah don't punch them they're kind of <laughs> squishy take a breath of some less putrid air <laughs> yeah when he's just like panting and still just like kind of like dry he'd be like huh? and you just see like goo goo on both her hands still and she's just like Oh, please. <laughs> I need a bath after this. And that's right. Uh, Anna. Uh, Anna is going to, um, this juicy boy here. Uh, those ones are turn. Yep, 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 you're good. I'm sorry, I, I'm, okay. do you mind if I just step up so I can actually see what I'm, oh, no, that one is turned, you're right. Okay, so zombie boy then. Okay. Uh, she is going to, um, cast Spell Sheet. Cast Spell Sacred Sheet. Flame. Okay. Dexterity saving throw. I don't know if y'all knew this, but zombies are not very dexterous. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> it gets a negative one. Sweet. Uh, so three radiant damage. And I'm going to use one of my uh, bolts of inspiration to also fire an arrow at it, please. Okay. There you are. 19 hits. 19 hits. Whee! 8. So 11 damage total. I'm a little bit confused. You sure. use Sacred Flame and your Light Crossbow. What's letting you do that? Uh, the War Priest thing oh. is... Cast a spell as a bonus off. action? Yes. Well, it is... Oh, what? It lets me cast a weapon attack. As long as I use it, use an attack action, I can make a weapon attack as a bonus. Nice. Okay. I'm just, can I'll you be, post be, that for me? Yeah, I'm actually I'll, not familiar I'll, with it. Right I just want to yes. take a look at it. Because that is strong. <laughs> Especially Sorry. level one. Okay. Each battle, when you use an attack action, you can make one weapon attack as your bonus action. Okay, so you use Radiant Flame, Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame? 
don't it's... think those work together. So the attack action is not the cast a, cast a spell and attack actions are kind of different. Oh, okay, then just take off the crossbow thing. Sorry. Okay. What um, does that mean? I, I thought oh, attack. Never mind. attack. I'm gonna I'm gonna verify that real quick. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm not. Not even a problem. Not even a problem at all. Uh, War priest. It's still, pretty, it's still a pretty nice feature. You know, yeah, it really is. Attacks. Give a second attack as a bonus. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and if it works, those and those works for your cantrips too. That's even sweeter. But I don't know if it would or not. I think my my confusion came because it says attack next like yeah. for the DC 12 yeah and so I thought it was okay. an attack so yeah so the way to use that the way to use that when you use the attack action you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action weapon so the way to okay. use that would be like if you swing your mace at something you can use your bonus action to take an attack okay so you can attack two, you can make two weapon attacks is what this looks like okay today. yeah I, I think the confusion is a differentiate between attack spell and spell attack right okay I feel like I should know and that. okay then don't worry about it. Just take it off. Just take off the yeah. crossbow. Okay. Does take the three um, though. And I let me see if I have any if I have any other actual bonus actions that are. No, that'll do it. Thank you. Okay. That is going to bring us to the skeletons. Several of them begin to turn and walk away. Again, marching directly into, marching directly towards the mounted and armored figure who continues to strike down any undead who flee from this battle. Now, that brings us to the remaining ones. The skeletons begin making their way to the door. You all hear them pressing against it, slamming against it, battering away at it. To no avail. Are there any skeletons inside? There are not. Fantastic. Okay. Ferris, back to you. Okay. Um. Oh crap! They almost went from the front there. So he is going to take a few steps over this way and all reliable. Um. He holds up his staff and fires off a ray of frost over at this one. I take it at 19 hits. 19 does. All right, we're getting somewhere. And you struck this one, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Anything and, else from Ferris? Uh... Yeah, so there's nothing else. I, I don't have anything else that I can do, correct? Like, I can't fire crossbows or any of my other spells. Uh, I, I don't think... Yeah, level 1 and 2 in Artificer, you're, you are you kind of get limited because a lot of times, it, unless you're like a battlesmith or you have some sort of... Well, you're not a battlesmith yet, but like usually it's a case of you either fire a cantrip or you fire a crossbow or you may fire one of your few spells and then you have to wait... Yeah, level, level one action is economy is not the best, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, because I, I don't have any uh, cannons or anything that would have yeah. an app bonus action or my, because I yeah. don't, can't have my monk kill side that doesn't have its own turn or nothing like that. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all. Uh, that all right. Be it. Does bring us back around to Flannery, who is going to. I think he's going to stay where he's at, put the remains of the chair down, and pull up his heavy crossbow and take another shot. With an 18 that does hit, four piercing on this guy. Brings us back to Bucky. Um, Bucky's gonna, I think, stick with just the game plan. Take another swing with his Morning Star. Okay. Ray 21. 21 hits. For seven piercing. Right. Bits of flesh come away, but it is still moving. Um, I think he might just take a five foot step down here to get okay. between the zombie and plenary. Got be it. Safe. 
And that will be turn. Tiberius. I'm, uh... I'm assuming that this uh, window directly in front of Tiberius has already been broken open, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. He's going to take uh, one step up here. Uh... And he is going to... Yeah, hold, on, hold on. He's going to take a swing with his flail. Okay. 15 hits. Just 15 hit. That does. Uh, or nine. Nine points of damage. Fantastic. You cave in half of this thing's skull, Tiberius, but it is still moving and still coming towards you. Mm. Oh, in that case, I am probably going to uh, utilize my action surge. Oh, nice. Which uh, I don't really have a button for it, but I don't know I've used it, so that way I can take a second swing at it. All right. 16 hits again. Oh! Or that 12. is exactly what it had left. Fantastic. This time you bring it around and you crush the rest of its skull in. Once your once your flail comes away, there's literally nothing but a just like a mess on top of this thing's shoulders, and then it finally slumps back onto the ground. However. Stand by. How much damage was that? 12 was the killing blow? Killing yeah. blow. Tiberius, it you see, as it drops down to the ground, you see its hand reach back up towards the windowsill and drag its now headless body back up to its feet. Hmm. For Pete's hey, sake. sounds fun. <laughs> I'm a. I guess I figure I'm going to stay right there because if it's going to get opportunity attack on me. Okay. And I also don't like the thought of other things trying to rush through that window. <laughs> okay. Okay. The zombies at the front of the house. One of them crashes through the window in front of you, Anna. It begins to get up, but that's all it's got in it. Tiberius, the one that is headless in front of you, wildly throws its hands around towards you. That's a 20 to hit. Uh, 20 just hits with that Shield of Faith going. Okay, that is 7 bludgeoning damage, Tiberius, as it strikes you squarely in the face. Anna's gonna give you the most annoyed freaking look. <laughs> right. Of all the I things you had to go for the face, that's what she likes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Tiberius, another one is closing in on you. It throws a fist in your direction, but misses wildly. Bucky, the zombie that is in front of you begins throwing its fists around. Another 20 to hit. That 20 just, hit just barely hits. For 7 bludgeoning to Tiberi to uh, 7 to Bucky. bludgeoning. 7 bludgeoning. All right. All right. Bucky, the other zombie comes moving up, but it tries to push past this one and can its arms are just kind of flailing around behind it as it tries to squeeze past this other one. Uh Okay, that is all zombies, and that is going to bring us back around at the top of the initiative and to Winnie. Cool. Um, Winnie is going to see this guy flailing at her BFF Bucky and run over here and take a swipe at him. Awesome. Even though they gross her out. 11 or hits. 11. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the wrong thing. Oh, okay. It would be with my long sword. Not Is the bonus the same? No, it's a plus, okay. um, plus three because I'm okay. not proficient. Go and roll. 10 still so, hits. So, 10. My apologies. Zombies have like lowest AC ever. 11 All slashing. Right. Okay, Winnie, you bring your sword down right on top of this thing. It carves through effortlessly. Four, and it does drop to the ground. Now, it drops to the ground and stays there. Wait. That's 
all I can do because I don't have any more key points. On it. Um, with. Hmm. I feel like it might behoove us if. I turn on dead one more time. You should only have one channel divinity at level one. Oh, well, I think I have two. Nope, it's one. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Man, I only I'm know this because I'm literally play playing a character. cleric in my game right in my own game right now. <laughs> oh, you know that. You are aware. <laughs> All right. I don't know why that set up as two. I'm going to fix that real quick. Um. Okay, then she's just gonna smash it with her glaive, please. Okay. Glaive. I love glaives. They're such cool weapons. Alright. 18, 18 certainly hits. 11 slashing. Fantastic. Okay. Chop off one of its arms at the shoulder. Is is now now I can use the war priest thing, right? Now you can definitely use the war priest. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Uh I'm just going to catch it on the backswing with the same with the glaive. Oh yeah. Eight hits. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies are easy to hit. Three slashing. All right, Anna, that does take this one down, and let's see if it gets back up. Damn it. Whoop. Broken APIs. Broken. That, those are certainly letters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it Five says. plus the That's damage taken. Anna. It does pull itself back up to its feet. Rude. Okay. Obviously, that mix of letters and numbers is what it says as it gets back up. <laughs> That's just the zombie moaning and growling at us. Right. <laughs> All right, Anna's turn is done. Thank you. Skeletons. Oh, sorry, I missed a zombie. It got to here. The one that Winnie left behind, it's like slowly shambling its way out from behind, from in the kitchen, out behind the bar. Oh yeah, I forgot about him too. Imagine us <laughs> doing the classic drag one of its legs thing. Right. <laughs> okay. Skeletons. All right. They start slamming against the door. Athletics checks for those two. 13. We'll call it a DC 20 to straight break the door down. And they do not. Right, skeletons. Skeletons, not a whole lot of them left. That is all of them. They're just trying to break the door down. Brings us to Ferris. Alright, uh Ferris. Yells to the others, uh, some words of encouragement. We I think we're uh I think we got this. Um he for a second thinks that what he can do and just goes back to all reliable. Yep. Cantrips, damaging cantrips are always be, a good play. Uh, doing it on that one. Fantastic. 15 does hit. And Ray of Frost for 5 cold. Okay. I keep on wanting to do a uh, fairy fire out over here, but uh, no. Oop, didn't even do that. Nobody's. Uh, <laughs> they're so easy to hit, it's like, uh, do we really need the advantage on rolls? I mean. <laughs> Right. Let's Ferris, your ray of frost strikes it and drops it down to the ground once again, a gaping hole rising through its chest. And DC 10, it gets up. Uh, it's a resilient I tried, zombie. Yeah. I tried. Right. Anything else? Uh, that's, uh, that's gonna do her. Okay. Brings us back around to Flannery, who is going to take a shot at the one behind his bar. He shouts out. You all see just like a panicked look across his face. It's like, not the booze! And let's lose a crossbow. <laughs> With an 18, he does hit. He does drop that one. Let's see if it gets back up. Six has to make a DC 11 con save, and he does not. It stays down. Bucky. 
Bucky's gonna just step up into the doorway here, bringing his Morningstar down on the next zombie. Nice. Standing on top of another one. <laughs> ten hits. Hey, ten. Ten still hits. Yeah, zombies. Or eight piercing. <laughs> All right. Yep. There are so many of these things. Orcs. Um if you will. He doesn't actually have a good bonus action, so that's going to be turn. Tiberius. I'm, uh, Tiberius is going to uh, take a swing at this one that he already killed once in the window. Okay. <laughs> Why won't you die? <laughs> oh, that'll do it. <laughs> Apparently he's rather arced it. Right? Back up. Yeah, it ha yeah, and criticals <laughs> criticals do negate its undead fortitude. So Tiberius, you swing your. How, how do you take this guy out? There's just a scowl, and he just literally twirls the little fellow around twice to build momentum straight over the head, and then just bringing it straight down on the end of that chain. Fantastic! The headless body crumples under the flail, and this time it does not get up. Just a kind of whole body drop to get all the body weight behind it sort of thing. Nice. <laughs> Stay down this time. Then he looks at the other one and goes, Well, I suppose you're going to be next and squares it up. Okay. It does bring us to the zombies. Bucky, the one in front of you, swings an arm at you. It is a 14 to hit. So I'm sure that misses our paladin. That does miss. <laughs> All right, Tiberius, down here, this one swings away at you. It's only an 11 to hit. Mm -hmm. On a, yes. The one in front of you rises back up to its feet and lurches towards you and swings away. 16 to hit. Yes. All right, fantastic. Okay, that does bring us to the top of the initiative. Now, yeah. Winnie, before you act... You all can still hear the clanging and the slamming against the southern door. And then it suddenly stops abruptly. Right before it explodes inward, splintering away bits of bone. A skeleton's skull goes flying past as the door explodes inward. And in steps the now dismounted armored figure. You know, I was going to say this door is open now, but I think it's safer to say that the door is just gone now, so... <laughs> no door. It is now an archway. Right. <laughs> okay. Hey, what would Winnie do in this instance? Let's go ahead and get his initiative in there. And... Okay, go ahead, Winnie. Uh, yeah, Winnie's gonna look at Bucky. Um, do you got this? Actually, hold on. Of course he's got this. Who do you think he is? <laughs> would, would, would Bucky say anything else? <laughs> True, would Bucky say anything else from knowing Bucky for so long? Um, yeah, Winnie is just... You know what? Winnie's not going to move. She's going to take out her short bow and take a shot at this guy. For 18, 18. hits. Four piercing. Fantastic. Your bow shot flies true, finds a chink in this thing's armor. It looks down at it and then just with an armored with an armor gauntlet just strikes the arrow down, breaking it off. For four piercing? Four piercing. Awesome. And then, quick question, DM. Okay. Short bow is considered a monk weapon at level one and two, correct? I am not sure, is it? <laughs> Let me see. Um, Man, I am really, uh, I am really uh, spoiled uh, by stack exchange and Reddit. Go ahead. Is a short bow considered a simple weapon? I can't remember. I believe short bow is simple weapon, but we can actually find that out really easy. Uh, yes, Monk can use short bow and get the proficiency bonus. Uh, Perfect. Then as... Arts. Okay, this is, 
fucking confusing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It isn't a monk weapon unless dedicated weapon, unless a dedicated weapon, like with the Kensai features. Okay, but because it is, I'm just trying to see if it falls into my martial arts so I can use it, use my bonus action to. Okay, so um, monk weapons are I'm... short swords and any simple melee weapon that do not have the, the two-handed property. So unless you've specifically chosen a short bow as your Kensai weapon, it is not a monk weapon. Okay, so I can't use it yet. Okay, that's fine then. Then then no bonus action for me. Okay. And that and turn. Anna. Uh this thing went in and she is going to look it up and down. This black fire is going to glitter around her hands and she's going to cast guiding bolt. Okay, I was gonna say you would have disadvantage because it's a ranged spell, but and it's five oh, feet from it? you. But sixteen oh. still hits. Oh yay! All right, roll up your damage. Or eleven radiant, fantastic. Anna, your point blank bolt of just dark fire strikes it cleanly in the chest. He begins to kind of glow with this faint light. He takes 11 points of Radiant, and has you, uh, the next attack against him has advantage. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to do your bonus action war priest thing? You said I couldn't do it with spells. Oh, you're right. You have to take the attack action. My bad. Yep. All okay. good. My only other bonus action I have is Divine Favor. And uh, until the spell ends, I any weapon attack I do will deal an extra 1d4. I will put it up in the... Okay. All right. Uh, Guiding Bolt would not be a weapon attack. That would be a spell attack. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I was. I meant to put the what, what the spell was up in there. Not not a. Got it. So like everything I do until the spell ends will be a extra three radiant. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Like that needs it. I'm done. I can't leave without getting in a <laughs> state without hitting me. So I'm just gonna chill and hope someone does something. There are <laughs> no more skelly boys left. Ferris, you are up. All right, Ferris, recognizing, <laughs> recognizing the danger of uh, what's going on here um, with the new combatant, he is going to hop up on this table and he is going to fire. Should we uh, should we ray. do a dimension twenty and, and have Ferris roll some dexterity checks for jumping on a table? Oh crap! Yeah. No. <laughs> roll a dex check. Roll, a, yeah. roll an acrobatics check. Oh crap! Acrobatics. Uh, what's the athletics on? Has anyone seen? The the set the episode two of Dimension Ugh. 20's Fantasy High. No, but yes. I've seen some of the clips from it. <laughs> it's a really good D and D stream. It really it is. is. Had I known I was gonna have to roll for that, I probably wouldn't have had. It, it makes it more fun. It does. It probably wouldn't do anything catastrophic to you. All right, all right, all right. Uh, can I do a dexterity roll? Uh, yep. At uh, athletics or acrobatics. Uh, I don't have acrobatics. Oh, that is up here. Uh, yeah, we'll back to that. Okay. It's not graceful, but you get up there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I figured it was just a jump. Yeah, don't worry. Whenever I, whenever I call for a roll like that that you didn't, like, specifically say you wanted to do, it's not going to have any sort of major effects. If Even if you had rolled a nat one, I still would have just been like, all right, you fall flat onto the table. Half okay. your movement to get up. That would have been the worst thing. Had me worried. <laughs> I was trying to flavor it up. So, Ferris, recognizing the danger of our new... Uh, Enemy hops up onto the table. He raises his staff and he fires a ray of frost directly at the uh, the new big bad here. All right. Nice. Twenty hits. Good hit. Figure uh, try Five to slow two. it down a little bit as it from getting further in. Right. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, but I do actually have a question. Okay. If I were to hit a somebody with Ray of Frost multiple times, does the slowing stack on it? No, no stack. Okay. 
Uh, and that'll do it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, that does bring us to Fer to uh, Flannery. To Flannery, who is going to shout a string of obscenities about his door and about who's going to replace it before letting loose a crossbow bolt at the big guy. And misses. Now that does bring us around to this big armored bastard that just crashed through the door. And he is, is looking... Is that before my turn? Oh, nope, sorry, sorry. I skipped you. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to correct you, but... No, you're good, you're good. No, it's totally my fault. I, I accidentally hit the skip, the skip turn button. I might have messed up by hitting end of turn. Just it's okay. Um... I literally put that button in there for people to use, but, like, barely anyone uses it, so I still end up doing it myself. But please, by all means, use the buttons. <laughs> all Bucky's going to do is bring the Morningstar down on the zombie in front of him. Okay. And then we'll see what happens from there. 23 hits. 23? Yeah. Or 7 piercing. Okay. It's looking rough, but it's still moving. Mm. We can take just a small step this way, kind of eyeing the big one, wanting to run that way, but okay. not yet. Um, and that will be... Okay. Hmm? So I, I definitely do like a lot of like like the make it make sense type of things. So if you were to run away from hmm? the zombie, since it's still in a room and there's literally a wall between you and it now, you could get away from it if you wanted to. Oh, like, without it taking it. It would not get an opportunity to attack against you because there's a wall between you and it now. That's just an option for you. But just just so you know, like a lot of times like that, even though technically it could get an attack of opportunity against you, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a zombie to like literally reach around the wall to try and reach you, so you wouldn't get one. Well, that zombie's Mr. Fantastic. He's <laughs> right? <the> <laughs> I think Bucky's going to go for it then. He wants to get close to the big one that's oh, yeah. threatening uh, Ana. Yeah, and it it is most definitely staring Ana down. Um, it is a skeletal face, but if a grin could be full of malice, it would be. And it is going to bring, it's going to pull out a longsword from its side. And with both hands wrapped around the hilt, it is going to begin swinging at Ana. That is some really cool art for that. Yeah, I like it. Okay, here it comes. Anna, that is a 24 and a 23 yep. to hit. Yep, 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 yep. For a total of... So the first one strikes down. It strikes you on the pauldron. The pauldron bends in. You feel it painfully bruise your shoulder. And then after that, it just kicks out at you squarely in the chest, striking. You can feel some bones break as you take 13 points of slashing. Oof. Okay. Wordlessly, it looms over you, its eyes still burning bright red. And... Tiberius. Well, considering this thing just attacked his wife, that the opportunity attack to move up to that position. The zombie swings away at you. It is only a 14 to hit. Okay, that misses. And uh, he brings the flail up from low and tries to strike up right across the chin of this thing trying to take the head off. Okay. Okay. Mm, what, I'm assuming the 12 will miss. The 12 will miss. I'll go ahead and take my sessional. All right. Late as it is. Tiberius. It expertly throws up its sword and parries away your flame using its parry ability and bumping its AC to 19. Okay. Okay. Now I know I ha now I know it has it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Brings us to the zombies. Okay. Uh Oh. Oh, so oh, sorry. Actually, uh, Go ahead. Uh, actually, there's also one thing I I'm going to utilize the bonus action just for the second win feature right quick. Fantastic. Uh, one d ten plus two. So eight. Okay, <laughs> that does bring us to the Zomboys. and Winnie. The one that was in the room with you was still watching Bucky leave, and it steps out from the room. I am going to give this a 50-50 chance if it stays focused on Bucky and leaves and goes after him. Roll um, 
Give me give me something with a 50-50 range. You can roll a d20 and call it 1 to 10 range. You could roll a d2 and call 1 or 2, whatever you want. Um, I'll roll a d20. Okay, do you want the high or the low to be good? Um, uh, high. <laughs> okay, so 11 through 20 and it moves away from you. Oh, I roll it? Yep. Go, oh, okay. Alright, so it steps out nope. from the door, still looking towards Bucky, but then the face just slowly turns towards you and swipes at you. That is only a 12 to hit. Doesn't hit. Alright. That does bring us back to... Nope, never mind, we got more zombies. Anna almost got away easy. Tiberius, the yeah. zombie that you escaped from, that you moved away from, does close the distance with you and takes a swing at you. That is only a six to hit. Yeah, that misses. And then Anna, the one behind you, covered in frost burns, bludgeoning, couple arrows sticking out of it, it does lurch towards you, and it is only a seven to hit. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna swipe at the one right in front of me okay. with my longsword again. Nine hits. Cool. For Ooh, 11. 11, nice. Okay, so that is going to be a DC 16 save from it to see if it gets back up. Let's see. It does not. It stays down. Perfect. And then Winnie's seeing her friends in trouble is gonna move their full movement all the way to them, which I should be able to get to them, but let me double check. Uh, Is that 50 feet? Yep. Yep. Cool. I'm going to move right here. Okay. And yell at Tiberius. Get it on the other side. We can take them together. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. Uh, Ferris, just a point of order. Um, we do, it's not technically rules as written, but I do allow players to move through other player character spaces for free. Right. Um, if you try to move through an enemy space, there will be a contested athletics check. And if you try to move through an allied, say you tried to move through um, Flannery's space, um, depending on their attitude towards you, he may or may not try to stop you. If he does not, you move through freely. If he does, contested athletics check. All right. Okay. That is why... Winnie was able to move through on a space freely. Yeah, she did some cool monk shit too. Right, like the way that Anna's... I the way that I reasoned that out is because like, have, has anyone ever seen a five foot box on the ground? I, I actually, actually kind of just yeah. figured that Anna was like <laughs> probably kind of I don't want to say like hunched over, but I guess doubled over in uh, pain from that last hit and that her being a monk. Uh, Winnie, I imagine, just kind of did that weird like. Like, what? tumble, like, roll over her, like, back to back, like an action movie type thing. To Pretty look. much what she did. That's what I en envisioned. Okay. Anything else from Winnie? Nope, because I can't do nothing. Anna. Anna is taking a knee, and um, she looks up at uh, Dead Boy, Big Boy, um, and tells him, uh, come back, come back character sheet. Yep. Dune's blessing, and then she stabs up with her glaive. Nice. Ooh. I'd like to take my session. <laughs> yeah, you would. Okay. Yes. 22 hits. <laughs> uh, He's already used his reaction. Flashing, Fantastic. Plus the three radiant from Fantastic. my um, radiant thingy. Okay. And then I would like to use my very last uh, War Priest uh, bonus action okay. and stab him again, please. Awesome. 22 hits. <laughs> Let's go. That's really good, getting two full weapon attacks at level one. That's really good. I, I, I did like a copy paste all my little feature things today. That's the only reason I know about any of these. Nice. <laughs> that is really good. That's really strong. Okay. I'm sorry. Anything else? Um, does he at least look like he's He does. He okay. is, I mean, he's a skeleton in armor, right? So he's not, like, physically showing any pain, but you can see chips and pieces on his armor, bits and pieces of his bones chipped away. He's definitely 
He's definitely feeling it, but he is not quite, I would say, like, critically wounded. Done. Thank you. Okay. Barris. All right. Um, fair seeing that the, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Seeing that um, <laughs> he's kind of... Help! <laughs> help me! Seeing that he's kind of covered, uh, he thinks take out the threat or cure wounds on uh, Anna and he decides to take out the threat first. Okay. Um, so, old reliable. Um, 22 certainly hits. The, East it's one. such a good spell, though. Mm -hmm. It is a very good spell. I wish I had a little more variety, but... Ooh, and it's a full 8. It'll come. We'll get it, though. Nice. nice. Okay. Are awesome. All right. Once again, Welcome struck up. down to the ground, falls in a heap at the ground, and... Stays there this time. Okay. Good job, Ferris. Nice. Stay down, you bastard. <laughs> he got up like three or four times. Yeah, he did. Right. That one was persistent. <laughs> oh my god. I imagine that, like, Ferris just threw a little extra oomph in there and he's just, like, right. frozen to the ground so he couldn't get up if he wanted to. <laughs> just watching it intently for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, um,. Okay. Flannery is going to shout some more obscenities about his door and take another heavy crossbow shot. 14 does not hit. Brings us to Bucky. Bucky is going to let out a yell and leap off this chair down here and bring his Morningstar down on the big undead. Hells yeah. A 13. 13 does not hit. Glances off of his pauldron. Great. Right. Well, that's going to be turn. Okay. It does bring us back around to him. Let's see. Okay. He no longer... Okay, he no longer has any other undead within five feet of him. So, he does begin swinging around. Let's see. He is surrounded now. And I think I would be... I think it would be... Yep, okay. Ana, he does swing one of his two swings at you. I believe I would be remiss to have him not be swinging at the person who pissed him off to begin with. So, <laughs> here it comes. Ooh, it's 20. It hits. <sighs> Crashes down for 11 slashing on a... Goodbye. He then turns, kind of makes a boastful gesture, holding his sword out to the side before bringing it up right into Bucky. And that is going to be... Oh, 24 to hit. That'll hit. Six slashing, Bucky. Six slashing, got Six it. Six slashing, which brings us to Tiberius. Bucky's uh, hurt him. Tiberius is dropping down here, so he has a thing. Awesome. Uh, and even if it does pair, and even if it does parry, he figures that'll set it up for Winnie to take a swipe, so... Mm -hmm. He only gets one reaction. One way or the other, he's going to be... One way or the other, he's going to take some... Nine. Fifteen is no good. 13. Okay. Mm, yeah, and I'm kind of out of any of my other... So, okay. Okay. Does bring us to the last remaining Zomboy, who is going to swing a meaty fist at Tiberius. Nine to hit Tiberius. <laughs> that misses. Uh, with Ana going down, does the Shield of Faith on me go away too? Yeah, yes, my it does. Okay. It does not matter because that's still missed, so. <laughs> Winnie. Cool, Winnie is gonna take a swipe at him with her longsword. For 12. No good. Which probably does not hit. That's it. Does it. Not. I don't, don't have anything else I can do. Okay. Ana. See a death save. Good luck. Let's see. Where are my saves? No, that's not it. 
Sorry. It, it should be next to your hit dice. It is. Thank I think you. the success failures. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Next hit dice. Ooh, it's nice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Brings us to Ferris. All right, question. Um, if I use uh, cure, was it, was it cure wounds on her, what does that do? So I believe cure wounds is a touch spell, so you would need to be within five feet of her to do it. Yep. But that would uh, her, immediately her that would immediately send recover her. It would immediately allow her to get back to her feet, or at least be conscious okay. again. Yeah, I'm gonna run up to her and I'm gonna use I'm gonna cast cure wounds. Okay. Hey, thanks. Uh, I gotta go to that screen to do that. There it is. Always good when you have someone to oh, heal yeah, the healer. Level one. <laughs> right. Yeah, we will do that. Mm -hmm. Or Eight wait a minute, can I cast that at level one? Oh, I can't cast that level two, can I? That has to be level one, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Thank okay. you. Until you get second level spell slots. Gotcha. But eight's pretty good. Eight's great. Eight is good. <laughs> yeah, it's a one d ten, isn't it? Mm hmm. One d ten plus your end mod, so you did over. You, you rolled better than yeah. <laughs> cool beans. There we go. Okay. Oh, and um, I believe, yeah, I can't do anything else, so. Okay. Flannery, once more, let's loose with his crossbow and misses again. He's not what he used to be. The years have not been kind to Mr. Flannery. All right, Bucky. Bucky's going to stick with the game plan and bring the Morningstar down. <clears throat> oh, one more. So, Bucky, you mm. bring your morning sword down against him. He raises up his sword as if he's going to parry, but then the sword and your morning sword both crash down into his helmet. Full of damage. <laughs> oh, so you know what's going to happen here is I'm going to divine smite this. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, look at all Four. that. Okay. Let's see. 24 <laughs> radiant plus another. Or, I'm sorry. 26 radiant plus another 13 piercing. 39. Jeez. I think you get another D8 because that's undead, I assume. That is a very undead thing. <laughs> so you can add another 6 radiant on top of that. 45 oh damage, is that right? Yeah. Um, 45 damage. Alright, Bucky, now toss your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slow motion 45 damage. Wow. wow. Okay, so as the Morningstar crashes down into him, the sword smacks him in the face, and then he bursts with this bright white radiant light. You all have to shield your eyes for a brief moment as this explosion of radiant energy rushes out from this creature. By the time your vision clears and you get a good look at what's going around, all you see is Bucky standing over a pile of busted armor and bone fragments. The radiant light that burst out also incinerated that last zombie standing right there. <laughs> Bucky's silence falls over the bar. Anna, like, coughs and just goes, Go off! <laughs> I feel like Ferris is just excited to see somebody else besides me and uh, Anna create that much light. Right? <laughs> and with Anna coughing and muttering show off under her breath, we are going to go ahead and call it a session right there. That was awesome. Good job, guys. <laughs> that